Hi everyone, the stories I picked for tonight have sled dogs and wolves in them, and they take place way up north in Alaska and Canada where it's very cold and lots of snow. And today was super cold here, so that's why I thought of these stories. And this first book is called Dog Team. Sometimes we run at night in the full moon when it is blue and white on the snow at the same time, so bright and clean and open you could read in the dark, we harness the dogs and run at night. They tremble, some small songs of excitement when the harnesses are put on because they want to run, breathe to run, eat to run, live to run but silent, straining to run, to go, to join the snow and the moon and the night, pulling against the tugs and the gang line, tied to the sled, heaving until finally the hook is freed from the snow and they are gone. The dance, through the trees, in and out, the sled whipping after them through the trees with no sound, but the song of the runners, the high soft, shush whine of the runners and the soft jingle of their collars into the night away from camp away from people away from houses and light and noise and into only the one thing into only winter night they fly away and away and away look at the beautiful sky yeah. a lake Frozen and flat and white in the moonlight, we slip out of the woods onto the ice in time for one breath, two, and across, the ice gone, creaking and moaning beneath us, and into the trees again, left, right, and we are not alone. Wolves. They come alongside in the moonlight, moon wolves, snow wolves, night wolves. They run with us, pace the dogs, pace our hearts and our lives, and then turn, turn away in the blue dark. And so we run, part of the night and dark and cold, and moonlight and steam from our breaths. Into the soft beauty of the woods and the quiet, we run mile on mile until we see lights. See lights and find that we have circled in the night, circled in the snow and the winter and our lives and all the world and have come home. There, gleaming yellow kitchen light, warm in the cold, deep cold, cold, so ice breath freezes on eyelids, freezes eyes shut, cold so the light from the moon is frozen on the snow, cold so all the dogs are coated with ice, and the snaps on their collars and harness won't open and their laughing, panting breath freezes on their cheeks and makes them all smiles, dog smiles, dog laughs. There, home, and we stop. Close now, so close we see people in the cabin, see the faces at the window. The dogs look back. Why are they still in harness? Why are they standing? The dance is over. Is, is it not? Is not the dog dance in the dog moon and dog cold and dog night over? Did you, they sing, little jets of steam from their mouths. Did you, did you, did you, did you, did you want it to last forever? They like running in the night, don't they? Yeah. And here it says... Nothing in running dogs is quite so beautiful as a night run. The cold is crisper, the dogs run for the pure joy of running, and the moon seems to dance on the snow. In all of our running and training and raising puppies, the night stands out the most, says Gary Paulson. Gary Paulson is the author of this book. He wrote this book, and he has run a big dog sled race across Alaska two times. Isn't that neat? Mm. 
And his wife, she painted the pictures in this book. In this book is called Walk with a Wolf. Isn't it pretty? They're very beautiful. Let's see, what does this say? Once wolves roamed nearly all the lands of the Northern Hemisphere, but they have been hunted and killed by humans for centuries, and today they are extinct or very rare in places where lots of people live, including Europe and much of North America. Most wolves now live in the far north of the world in Alaska, Siberia, and parts of Canada, such as the Yukon Territory, where this story is set. Walk with a wolf in the cold air before sunrise. She moves, quiet as mist, between spruce trees and birches. A silent gray shadow, she slides between boulders and trots over blue pebbles to the edge of a lake. She plunges through slush ice and laps the chill water, snaps at a feather that drifts down from a goose wing, then splashes to shore and shakes herself like a dog. Wolves were probably the first large animals to live with people, and all the kinds of dogs we know today are descended from them. There's deep snow on the mountains, snow clouds bank in the east, winter is coming, and the geese fly south. See the geese? Yeah, they're flying really. Mm -hmm. Run with the wolf as she bounds up the steep slope. She sniffs at a skull that stares at the lake. Moss grows on the antlers. The bone has turned gray. There's no meat on it now, and she's hungry. During the summer months, a wolf may hunt alone and catch fish, hare, that's like a rabbit, squirrel, and other small animals. But these creatures go into hiding in winter to escape from the freezing cold weather. Howl with a wolf in the dawn, thin and icy. Deep from her chest, the eerie sound comes. Long, low music, the song of the Arctic. Another howl answers. With a wag of her tail, the wolf runs to the pack. Three sons and a daughter, cubs from the spring, squirm on their bellies and lick at her neck. Mother wolves give birth in springtime. They can have anywhere from 1 to 11 cubs each year. Although they don't stay together all the time, most wolves live in family groups called packs. The black wolf greets her with a stare from his pale eyes. He's her mate, the pack's strongest hunter, and he's hungry too. <clears throat> the wolf pack is ready. They set off together like eight ghost dogs, silent and stealthy as the coming of frost. Three ravens are flying overhead. Most packs have up to eight wolves in them, although packs of as many as 50 have sometimes been seen. <clears throat> Hunt with a wolf on the trail of a bull moose following its tracks and its scent on the ground. Wolves have to hunt as a pack if they are to kill large animals such as moose and deer. There's a crash in the bushes. The moose is close. The wolves crouch on their bellies, their hearts beating fast. There's danger in hunting. A kick from a moose can break a wolf's ribs. Charge with a wolf. The pack breaks through the bushes, swift as gray lightning with one bolt of black. Did you know there was black wolves? Have you ever seen one? The moose turns and sees them, but he's old and he's limping. There are scars on his legs. The wolves leap at him, biting, hear the moose bellow, hear the wolves panting as they drag him down. Drops of blood fall like berries to the ground. Mm. That's kind of sad, but the wolves have to eat too, don't they? Rest with the wolf, no longer hungry. She watches the cubs come to join in the feast. If there is plenty of food around, pack members will all feed at once. But if meat is scarce, 
The strongest wolves will eat first, and the youngest, the cubs, last. Sleep with a wolf while a blizzard is blowing. The sky is full of a million gray ice moths as the wind drives the flakes down. Backs to the gale, the wolves curl among boulders, heads tucked between hind legs, and noses covered by the fur of their tails. They have their own fur coats, don't they? Stay warm. Dream with the wolf as the north star is shining. See the bright star? There's thick snow on the ground and a shivering wind, but the wolf dreams she is walking with new cubs in warm sunlight as the wild geese return with spring to the lake. That's it. I don't think we have as cold weather here as they do way up north, but it still got cold today, didn't it? Yep. Here's, this is from our book, a little boy after God's own heart. A heart filled with patience. In the Bible, it says, be patient with every person. 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. Patience. I'm tired of waiting. Speed up. Come on. Are the words of a boy whose patience is gone. How can a guy wait when he's raring to go? He asks God for patience and help to go slow. When you're in a hurry, don't think of yourself. Instead, ask the question, how can I help? Let God give you patience for the needs of others, including your parents, sisters, and brothers. Good night. Good night.